Taxlaw GH and welcome to our video on exam questions on VAT. Here we look at a couple of past exam questions, one from the Chartered Institute of Taxation Ghana, final level. Then we look at um, another one from the Institute of Chartered Accountants Ghana, level two. Then we look at another one from level three of the Institute of Chartered Accountants. So three different questions on VAT which should um, give you a fair idea of how this topic is examined um, in the exam. So without wasting any further time, let's take the first question. This will be taken from the February 2020 exam sitting of the Chartered Institute of Taxation. This is their um, final level two, the final level before you qualify as a Chartered Tax Practitioner, the Advanced Taxation Practice Paper. Um, this is a very good question on VAT to test your computational skills and your ability to interpret um, scenarios when it comes to VAT. So as usual, we read the preamble to the question and then we read the requirement. So it says, um, Nyamiaya Limited is a company registered under the Companies Act 1963, Act 179. So um, just as a side note, just note that this Act has been repealed. So the New Companies Act is the Companies Act of 2019, Act 992. So just note for your learning purposes that the Companies Act is no longer Act 179. It's, uh, it's now Act 992 of 2019. All right, so it's a company registered under the Companies Act. And they've been in consultancy business, so take note they are in the service business over the years. The company has been registered to operate as a VAT registered company since it deals in both taxable and non-taxable supplies. So it means we should expect to see some exempt VAT supplies in this question. All right, then what's the required? Requirement is to compute the Get fund levy. First thing we're supposed to do, compute the national health insurance levy. Second thing we're required to do. And the third thing is compute the VAT. Third thing we're required to do, payable for the month of January 2019. And this is for six marks. Obviously, um, if you're an examiner, you probably allocate um, two marks for each. It depends, right? So we are required to compute get fund levy, NHL, and VAT. What information have we been given? So we've been given the total value of taxable supplies invoiced. And take note, this amount is, give me a second, is VAT inclusive. Inclusive means they've already charged VAT. So take note, we need to strip out the tax um, from this amount. The amount already includes VAT. Take note of this. Next, we've been given is input tax. Oops, let me use this. The next we've been given is the input tax on their taxable supplies of 463.17. Obviously, if you have watched our videos on VAT, all the videos, you know that when it comes to input VAT, in fact, the concept of VAT is you have your output tax, which is a tax on your sales if you're into goods or your services if you're into service business input tax essentially be tax on your purchases or things you procure to carry out your taxable activity so here i've been given input tax but there's something called non-deductible input tax it's not every input tax that is deductible there are some that cannot be deducted so obviously this figure here it is my expectation that a certain portion of it will not be deductible. So I'm sure the question will tell us. The next is we've been given the value of exempt supplies. Take note, exempt supplies are supplies that are not subject to VAT at all. So these are supplies that are listed on the first schedule of the VAT Act. So any exempt supply does not attract VAT at all. It is not even within the scope of VAT. VAT does not apply to that item. So it means this 360 here, 
you might as well just forget about it. It doesn't exist to you. To you, it doesn't exist because VAT does not apply to exempt supplies at all. All right, the next thing is purchase of a double cabin Toyota pickup. This time it's not inclusive like this one was. Here it is what VAT exclusive. So it doesn't include VAT. We need to charge the VAT amount. How much is it? 240000 But I remember when I was talking about input tax here, I said there's something called what? Deductible taxes and non-deductible input taxes. Now, if you once again have watched our video on the VAT series, when we go to deductible input tax, we said there are some items that are not deductible. So for a quick revision, first thing I mentioned was what? If you are or if you are a business and you incur input VAT on motor vehicles and motor vehicle spare parts, those will not be deductible unless you are in the business of what dealing in motor vehicles or motor vehicle spare parts. Obviously, the VAT regulations gives us some exceptions for things we call motor cars, but that is not within the scope of this. Just know that anytime you see um, a motor vehicle, and the question doesn't mention that they're in the business of dealing in motor vehicles. Please, that amount is not deductible for input tax purposes. So here, they said this company is a consultancy business. Clearly here. So they are not into the motor vehicle business. So any motor vehicle they buy, all things being equal, the input VAT on that motor vehicle should not be a deductible tax. Simple. So we are going to have to take out or disallow this amount here but because it's vat exclusive we would need to work for the um vat component before we can disallow take note of that then they gave us a value of relief supplies to be 108400 now relief supplies are supplies that are taxable all right just that the persons to whom we supply them have been relieved from the tax i.e they are not required to suffer the tax. So you charge them the tax, all right, but there's a way we relieve them. In practice, there is something called a VRPO, which is a VAT relief purchase order. It's like a receipt or a booklet. So where you supply a good or a service to a person who is relieved, that person will give you a VRPO in lieu of the VAT amount payout. So don't give you cash. They'll pay you your good or service fee and then they will just give you the VRP to cover the VAT. Now, when the VAT regulations were passed in 2016, that's LI2243, what the law says is now persons under relief are required to pay the VAT in cash and later apply for a refund. So in practice, there are some people who are still issuing VRPOs like the oil and gas and mining companies. Just know that in practice. But for our purpose in the exam, what concerns you really is that for a relief supply, it will not form part of your output VAT because the person you are charging it to will not give you the, the cash to pay. They'll give you a VRPO. So when they are saying VAT payable here in the requirement, VAT payable, we won't include a relief supply because it's not part of your VAT payable amount. Just That's the point here. So all I gave you was a background in practice that for exam, your business is what the first one, your output VAT. And we will talk a lot more when we get to this question here. At the very end, it talks about um, explaining these um, um, items here, taxable activity, exempt, relief, zero rated, and giving examples. So when we get there, I'll explain further so that at least you get to understand what these terms really, really, really mean. Um, people use the term anyhow, but they don't really understand. So I'll break it down for you so you understand. So for now, let's, let's focus on this question. So our task really is to compute get fund levy, compute NHIL, and compute VAT payable based on this information. All right, they said our review of the invoices showed that VAT and other levies, here they mean NHIL and okay, IL, and then what gets fund levy, GTFL. On the Toyota pickup and VAT and NHIL on the hotel bills, of 1880 were included in the input tax so it means this figure here this 480,000 here 48317 includes the VAT NHIL and get fund on this Toyota pickup here 
So when we compute, we need to deduct it as non-deductible before we get the final input tax for the, for the month. And then they are saying that hotel bills are also included. I forgot to mention, I was giving you the list of non-deductibles. I mentioned that the first non-deductible is what? Motor vehicle and motor vehicle spare parts. Unless you're in the business of dealing in motor vehicle and motor vehicle spare parts. Any motor vehicle you, you incur or you buy and any motor vehicle spare parts you buy will not be deductible as input tax. The next category is what we call entertainment. Entertainment expenses. So here, all entertainment expenses, hotel, food, parties, um, end of year staff awards, all those entertainment expenses will not be deductible unless you're in the business of providing those entertainment services. So here, if they have hotel bills, it will fall under the entertainment disallowance and any hotel bills will not be allowed. So take note, these are things the examiner will seek to test you on, uh, most likely when it comes to input VAT. The third is subscriptions. So anytime you see subscriptions, please take note, make a note of it. But what I've seen over the years in the exam, what they really want to test you on will typically be motor vehicle, motor vehicle spare parts, and entertainment. Those are the very, very common ones. So remember, they've given us two examples here of things that are not deductible. They said hotel bills, we should have caught that, okay, this will fall under entertainment. Then the motor vehicle fall under the first one. So these two, we need to work out their um, VAT and then disallow them. You can deduct for the period. So now that we've broken the question down into its component parts, let's begin to solve the question. All right. Okay. So this was um, question 1A. It's um, always try to write the company name. So Nyame Aya Limited. Right. So computation of Get fund levy, NHIL, and VAT payable for the month of January 2019. Okay, so let's start. What do we need or what information do we need? Simplistically, First thing is what, what we have here, total value, this first one here, total value of taxable supplies invoiced. That is how much they have invoiced their clients or their customers for services they've rendered as a consulting company, right? So if that is a figure, so we say um, taxable, let me give it a bigger space. Okay, so taxable supplies invoiced will give us what Ghana City four three five three three seven two. Okay, this is seven. All right, now with the way we are required to compute. Get fund levy, NHL, and VAT. It's in steps. VAT is the last tax to be computed. So you compute your NHL, you compute your get fund, you add the two to the tax base, sum them together, then the base you get, you apply VAT. And for those who don't know, or quick revision, the rate of NHL is 2.5%, the rate of get fund levy is 2.5%, and VAT is 12.5%. So you say, you remember what did they say they said this figure is vat inclusive so it already includes a tax there's no reason for you to um compute a tax again we need to extract the tax from it now there are so many ways you could do this people have different approaches um let me show you mine so i use um ratio and proportion really but before we do that let's use the markup and margin approach or what people call 
profits and um, the profits approach right so if i have a cost figure and i add my profits to that figure it should give me the selling price agreed so if my cost base is 100 and my profits ends up being 18.125 this should give me 118.125 someone may ask how did i get the 18.125 okay let's do some quick math on the side here what the law says we should or how we the law recom recommends that we compute VAT is if you have an invoice value of 100 cities any child is what 2.5 percent so that gives you two cities 50 per west right so this 2.5 percent your get fund levy will give you two cities 50 per west because it's 2.5 percent for, don't forget that they are all computed on the base of what 100 you are required to add everything together to get 105 then your vat will be what 12.5 percent so give me a second vat is 12.5 percent so calculator when i compute 12.5 percent of 105 it gives me 13 point one two five and when i add everything this should, this should give me so plus one zero five give me one one eight point one two five and when i subtract so less my hundred my initial cost my invoice value what do i get the tax on it is what eighteen point one two five so that's how come i know right so you don't need to do this every time you just know that effectively the rate people add a three together and think it's 17.5 so 2.5 plus 2.5 plus 12.5 no it's 2.5 plus 2.5 on the base add everything together and you compute a 12.5 on everything so that gives you a tax on tax so effectively it's 18.125 as you can see here All right so that is why i know that the p here should be what 18.125 so c is 100 that is exclusive so this would be my vat exclusive the p will be my tax which will be what nhio get fund and vat then this s will be my inclusive figure so this is how i split it c plus p equals s c will always be 100 if you want to find exclusive p will be the rate of what's tax so 18.125 and your s will be the inclusive figure so let's do ratio and proportion the S, which stands for 118.125, so I'll say if 118.125, which is my S, equals what? This figure here, 4 million, so equals 4353372. Then, I want to find this C over here. This is what I'm interested in, this C. What does it correspond to 100 right so if 118.125 equals this then 100 will be what so you can find or solve for x if that's your style and you get the answer right um i will want to do what some people like to call it more or less divide so here i know that okay then i want to find 100 over 118.125 times what this figure of four three five three let me clean this i don't need it okay four three five three three seven two so hundred to my calculator over one one eight point one two five times four three five three three seven two this gives me ghana cd three six eight five three nine four point two nine so this figure here is my um tax exclusive this is your v80 let's even make it clearer this is tax exclusive.
exclusive. Okay, so I know that from my initial 4.3 million, which included all the three taxes, if I strip away all the taxes, I get 3.6. But the question wants me to find NHL, get fund, and VAT. So I now say NHL payable equals 2.5% of Ghana CD 36. Eight five three nine four point two nine. So this will give me my calculator time zero point zero two five. This me ninety two thousand. So I forgot to bring the Ghana CD sign. Ninety two thousand one three four point eight six. My calculator says point eight five seven one. But let's just round off. So this is my any child payable. All right. So what is my get fund levy payable? It's also 2.5%, so 2.5% of Ghana CD 3685394.29. Obviously, give me the same figure. So Ghana CD 92, 134.8. All right, so this is my NHIL payable. This is my get fund levy payable. Now I need to work for VAT, right? So computation of VAT payable. Remember I said for the VAT, the tax base is the original tax exclusive figure plus NHL, plus get, um, get fund before you apply the 12.5. So this becomes, so tax exclusive amount equals what? 3685394.29. I add any child of 92, 134.86. I add my get fund levy also of 92, 134.86. So this is two. Then I sum them up. So this, my calculator times two plus three, six, eight, five, three, nine, four. Point two nine. This gives me a figure of three eight six nine six six four. So I call this tax base for VAT, or technically what is known as is what taxable value. Or VAT right then what will be it the VAT amount be so I'll say it follows that VAT will be what 12.5 percent of this figure three eight six nine six six four so times 12.5 gives me Ghana CD four eight three seven zero eight so this is my vat um payable on the face of it i'll tell you something shortly now the nhl and get fund amounts are not subject to an input tax deduction so what you charge is what you pay to gra and the in fact when you incur any child and get fund as a business you can't even deduct them so those are non-deductible the question says you should find the nhl get fund and vat payable we found the NHIL, we found the get fund. For VAT, this will be your output VAT. By output VAT means you have the right to deduct your what? Input VAT, but take notice only the input VAT that is deductible. Right, so we need to go back to, remember I told you the motor vehicle and the hotel will not be deductible. So we need to go back to the question and strip those out. All right, so now that we have this, then we can say, 
output VAT is what? 483708 less input VAT. What did the question say we have? If you watch here, it said input VAT right here. Input VAT is 460317, right? So we come here. I input VAT. So input VAT, we have what? You can put in the bracket here. Ghana CD 460317. I picked that from here, right? So that figure, like I said, they told us down here that it includes a number of things. So I need to strip it of what? Things that are not supposed to be deductible. So let's even modify this. We'll say deductible input VAT. That's what we're going to find now. Right? What is deductible? If you have, so total input VAT is what? 460317. Let's take out the things that are not deductible. So let's, let's hotel bills of 1880 take note that the hotel bills this is not the bill amount it's not the bill amount it's rather what the vat on the bill if you read the sentence says your review of the invoice to show that vat and other levies on the toyota pickup and so read them as one and VAT and other levies on the hotel bills of 1880 was included in the input. So this is the VAT and NHL and get fun amount, right? So you take um, all of this out, okay? And even to clarify, they said input tax. So this is not just input VAT. So all of this here is like technically input tax. But I'm using the term input VAT because you can't even deduct input NHL or input get fund. So just clarify. This figure here they gave us the 40 m um, 460,000 includes NHL and includes get fund. All right, so let's also let's um motor vehicle I was about to say motor vehicle tax. So let's say motor vehicle input. All right, so how do we find this? For the motor vehicle, they said they bought the motor vehicle for 240,000 right but this is exclusive of tax so we need to work for it so let me just do a little working here so i come and say working this is to get the motor vehicle tax so they bought a motor vehicle costs as well 240,000 I've already told you from the top here that what effectively the tax is what, um, what is it? Yeah, 18.125. So let's save ourselves the stress of computing 2.5% here, computing 2.5 and coming to add to do 12.5. Let's just save time. The VAT, NHIL, and the get fund levy on the motor vehicle will be what? Um, 18.125 percent because we know the percentage right percent of what 240,000 or oh, just give me my calculator um, so 18.125 times 240,000 this will give me 43 so Ghana City 43,500 so take note this 43500 is the VAT, the NHL, and the get fund on the motor vehicle. So what does that mean? It means that what? Don't forget that I said the NHL and get fund, they are not even deductible in the first place. So they are even out. That's why I'm adding them. Then the 12.5% VAT, if it wasn't for a motor vehicle, would have been deductible. But because it's a motor vehicle, then all of this cost here is what now non-deductible. So I come here and add it to what I have to take out. So 43,500. 
So the input that I can actually deduct is the 460 they gave us in the question here, right? So 460, 317 minus what? 1880 being the hotel minus my 43500 um, for the motor vehicle. So my deductible input tax is what? I can put it here. Deductible input tax is what? 414. Nine three seven. Take note. This is my deductible input tax. Deductible input tax. That's the amount of VAT I can deduct as input. So my VAT payable for the month will be what my output here four eight three seven zero eight minus my input. This figure here. So it becomes um, four eight three. 708 minus 414.937. This gives me 68.771. So this is my VAT payable. The question has asked us to do three things compute the get fund, NHL, and VAT. So I can summarize them here. Let's even come after this and say NHL. Payable equals what? We computed that here. Can you see this figure here and this one? So it'll be the same for any child and get fund. So any child payable is Ghana City 9234.86, I believe. Mine get fund levy payable. Equals the same 92134.86. Then my VAT payable will be what we just got here. This figure 68 Ghana CD 68771. Take note that for the VAT, we are allowed to first deduct our input taxes to arrive at what the output value. Now, someone may ask, let's come back here. What do we do with the exempt supply and the relief supplies? Remember, I already told you that exempt supplies, this one here, exempt supplies do not attract VAT at all. So you don't even consider it in the question. Like, skip it out. It's not taxable. An example is um, if, if you buy table salt or education service, you, go, you get education services or um, you import machinery to be used in the upstream oil and gas sector or goods for the disabled all of those things are um, exempt supplies right or um what else pharmaceuticals all of those things are exempt so once an item is exempt it means no vat applies so don't think about it the next thing is the value of relief supplies what do you do to it remember i told you i already explained and we'll do it in the next question we're about to solve that for relief supplies, yes, they are taxable, but you don't have any obligation to pay the tax to the GRE. Here they're asking you for the get fund levy, NHIL, and VAT payable. Once it's a relief supply, you don't have any business with that. So this is the answer. There's a solution. Key thing to take away from here is remember the non-deductibles for motor vehicle and entertainment expense. That's what we're tested on here. So motor vehicle. And motor vehicle spare parts if you're not in the business and they told us these people are consultants so they don't qualify entertainment unless you're a hotel or you're providing entertainment services or hotel bills or meals so you see meals end of year party all of those things are not deductible so key skill key skill to acquire from this question is please remember how to split um a tax which is inclusive of taxes or how to strip the taxes from it and a figure that is inclusive of taxes is a very key skill to have there are many people who have different approaches so feel free whatever works for you this is my approach if you love it you can adopt it for your personal use so that does it um, for this question from the chartered institute of taxation ghana our next question is from the institute of chartered accountants ghana so we've done one from cit ghana Let's do one from ICA Ghana, right? This was from the November 2019 exam. 
and it was their level two principles of taxation paper. This is for three marks. And before we even attempt this question, I want to mention something here. There are students, in fact, most students of tax are interested in the computational questions like this one. So let's solve questions. Let's do the numbers. But one thing you probably don't know is that for every tax paper, tax is based on law. It's based on provisions of law. Everything I've said here has a rule of a basis in law. I don't want to bore you with the details, but the non-deductibles, you can find them in section 48 of Act 870. It's detailed there. Relief supplies, you find them in the third shadow of Act 870. I've already mentioned the exempt supplies are in the third shadow of Act 870. The rates are provided in section 3 of Act 870. So the, the, law, the laws provide the basis on which we do all of these things without the law there is no tax. So when you see a question like this that is testing you on the theory, remember that essentially the numbers we're doing up there are even based on law in the first place. So students should not shy away from doing the theoretical questions. And if you want to pass any tax paper, trust me, take my word for it, at least 55% of your questions on the exam day will be theory. I'm saying 55 because I'm being conservative. If I'm pushing it and I'm being realistic, it should be 60, 40, in favor of written questions. And in fact, in recent years, examiners have moved more towards 65, 70% written. So you need to know the principles such that you can write them when you're asked and not just know how to compute numbers or do um, the math when it comes to taxes. So look at this question. It's on VAT, but they're saying, what should Percy do? All right, so here, Percy Cool, who they are calling Percy, Supplied goods to Percy Hot or Perry Hot with so Percy Cool or oh, and Perry Hot. All right, both are VAT registered traders. Percy issued a VAT invoice accordingly on 15th February 2019. On 20th February 2019, Percy received a call from Perry indicating that he has lost the VAT invoice issued to him. What should Percy do? You see, it comes back to what I was saying a few minutes ago, a few seconds ago, that tax is based on law. This is a very particular section of the law. If you haven't read it, you can't answer it. So tax is very easy, but you should know your stuff, which is why I recommend always, we have covered every single thing you need to know about VAT in our VAT um, video series. It's a lengthy series, but by the time you have watched everything, there is nothing you'll be asked on exam day that you will not know. That's a good part of it. So once you've watched every single VAT video we've covered, you will know everything that you need to know to answer an exam question. So here, I'll tell you the answer. I'll tell you how to answer it. But like, I'm going back to the point. If you don't know the principle, you can't answer this, right? So please, for tax, know your stuff and then walk in the room and walk into the exam room with confidence. It's a very easy paper. Tax is so easy. Know your stuff and there's no way they can trick you. They always test you on principles that are already in law that are established they can't change it so if you know your stuff you should score really high in a tax exam so back here this is simply someone who has lost their invoice what are they required to do it's clearly provided for in law if you don't know you don't know right so let's answer this all right so this was question 2A in that exam sitting. What should Percy do? It's for three marks. So I'm not going to um, attempt to write too many things. Let me just make my point straight uh, um, straightforward. For those who are interested, you can find this, um, I think it's section 41 of the Act. If I remember correctly, subsection 8 of the VAT Act of 2013, Act 870. So the examiner took just one part and examined um, students on this. What does this section deal with? It deals with what the issuance of VAT invoices to persons after you've made supplies to them. That section of the law is what recommends or says that when you lose your VAT invoice, you are required to inform the person who made the supply to you that, yo, I've lost the invoice. Can you issue me a duplicate invoice? And they are required to issue you a duplicate invoice within a certain period of time. But you should also have informed them within a certain period of time. So that's what I require to answer here. Tell the examiner that um, who lost what. 
let me see percy supplied to perry okay and percy received a call from perry yeah so percy would have to issue an invoice to perry a duplicate invoice because he's lost original but perry has the requirements to inform percy within a certain period of time when he realizes he has lost the invoice right so let's answer this you can just write this scenario deals with a case where the original VAT invoice has been lost or misplaced. All right. So where within 30 days after the date of a supply so this is me stating the principle of law right the recipient who must be or who is a taxable person i'm trying to um, paraphrase loses the original VAT invoice they are required to inform the supplier of this loss so where within 30 days of what um the supply they realize that they've lost the invoice they're required to inform the supplier so we state the fact that what perry informed percy on the 20th of February into bracket. Remember the supply was on 15th, right? So the supply was on 15th. And then he made a call on the 20th that he's lost it. So he was well within the 30 day period. That's all we are trying, that they are testing you on here. So um, Perry informed Percy on the 20th of February into bracket five days after the date of the supply so the above condition has been met after you made this condition, what else must happen? Okay. So upon receipt of the request from the taxable person the supplier is required to within 14 calendar or oh, did I mention calendar here okay this 30 is 30 calendar days does it make any difference so it just means it's not 30 working days it's calendar days like normal days 30 full days not um I'm not taking our weekends with the full um, calendar day. So within 14 calendar days, issue to the recipient of the supply 
a certified copy you can say into brackets duplicate with a clear marking of copy on the face of the invoice so now let's answer the question they said what should pair c do following from the above pair c must within 14 days after receiving um, Paris notice of loss issue to Perry a certified copy of the invoice clearly marked as copy so he has to issue a new invoice or the duplicate and then write copy on it so this was um he's supposed to do now if you want to be really troublesome which you shouldn't be the law actually requires the person to write to the other person in writing what did they say they said what percy received a call so this was a candidate who wants to probably impress the examiner and score marks. You can make a point and say that he called him instead of writing or making it a statement in writing. But with the advent of technology these days, can you make a valid case that because it wasn't a letter and it was a call, it won't qualify? I don't think so. But take note, the law says it must be in writing. So Perry should have written to Percy to inform Percy of this loss. But the point I'm making is, can we make a case, a valid legal case, that because it was a phone call and not a letter, it means he didn't meet this No, The key thing is, did he make the um, thing known to him within 30 days of the supply? Yes, he did. Then if he did, then he has 14 days. But you can make an extra point. I don't think it will make any difference. Examiners don't look at these nitty-gritty. Here, they want to test you on the fact that 15 February, 20 February. But... You can mention that point if you want to be controversial in the exam, right? So that's it. This is what they were testing you on in the next, um, in this particular question. Let's look at the final one, which was from the final level. This is from also the Institute of Chartered Accountants, Ghana. It's from the May 2019 exam. And this was paper 3.4. Then um, level 3, when they did not have the level 2 tax. So this was like a final level tax paper you took before you became a chartered accountant. And question 4C and 4D, they said explain the following terms used under VAT administration and provide two examples under each term. So here, um, two marks, so two, four, six, eight. So it's 10 marks on VAT. It's a lot of marks on VAT. VAT appears in every single tax exam, every single one of them without fail. So... If you're sitting a tax paper, unless it's a, a, a paper that is clearly uh, marked as, let's say, a direct tax paper or an income tax paper, if not, if it's a general tax paper, there will be VAT, 100% guaranteed. So you cannot go into a tax exam without studying VAT, right? So here, I require to define taxable activity. Right, I'm required to define exempt supply, relief supply and zero rated supply and so we should give two examples each so explain the following terms and break the question into the component parts explain and provide two examples for two marks so let's do this so for c i how do we define a taxable activity and give two examples so our law in section five of Act 870 defines taxable activity for once again. Remember, I said everything here it's in the law. Everything, all the things here are in the VAT Act, Act 870. 
So the examiner picked different sections of the law and is just drawing it here for you to get 10 easy marks if you know what you are doing. So please and please again, know your principles, which is why we've set up our tax academy videos. Watch them if you want to understand. If you know your stuff already, don't worry, just um, revise these and you'll be fine. How do we define taxable activity? Saying that taxable activity activity right is an activity and don't be scared you can paraphrase in your own words but get the key concepts or the key terms is an activity carried on by a person in the country that is Ghana or partly in the country whether or not for a pecuniary profit I've memorized it, so please do <laughs> right that involves that involves or that is intended to involve in whole or in part the supply of goods or services to another person for consideration. I've paraphrased, but I'm sure I got like 98% right. I mean, for the losses. I've done this a number of times. So I know what it says, but these are the key elements. So any activity, right, carried on by a person in the country or partly in the country, whether or not for a pecuniary profit, it simply means whether, whether or not it's for monetary value, really. That involves or that is intended to involve in whole or in part the supply of any goods or services to another person for a consideration. That's a taxable activity. So we need to define a taxable activity because that is what gives us the scope of what VAT will really, really, really apply to. Right. So now that we define taxable activity, so we need we need to give what two examples. So um, two examples of a taxable activity are the law gives us a long list and i've covered it in the vat um, video i think it's even the part one of the vat series so you can watch that so there are a number of them one thing i, I can never forget is what it keeps it's always in my mind so the making of gifts or loans of goods i remember this very well because i know that once you give something out for free right it's a taxable activity i can never forget this one right then any other one for example you can also have what the appropriation of goods or services for the personal use or consumption by the taxable person or by any other person they said they want just two, so we are done. But there's a long list. The other ones, like the supply of staff, um, the processing of data, the processing of other information, um, 
um, on the export of non-traditional products, the leasing or letting of goods on hire, the sale and transfer of what's um, license, patent, copyright, trademarks, all those things are part of taxable activity. So there's a number of things you can choose from. Choose any two and give them to the examiner. The next we want to do is the so we should define exempt supply. So we say exempt supply or exempt supplies refer to supplies that are not subject to VAT at all. Take note. Also add this. These supplies are listed on the first schedule of the VAT Act. I say 2013 Act 870. If you don't know the Act number, don't bother. Please, what you need to remember is what they are on the first schedule. So you can just say, exempt supplies are supplies that are not subject to VAT. These supplies are listed on the first schedule of the VAT law, and you are good to go. If you if you remember this Act number, all the same, more grease to your elbow. But please remember that key thing to take away is remember the fair shadow bit right so exempt supplies are supplies that do not attract VAT at all they have no business with VAT at all they are not subject to VAT um, so examples of exempt supplies are you can see a supply, I mentioned this earlier, of what education services. You can never forget this. This is why when you paid your university school fees or your high school school fees, nobody charged you VAT. Education services are exempt um, from VAT in Ghana. So remember this very, um, very simple. There's another one to a supply. of what really domestic transportation it's a very long list so it even has uh, it, it has um, the supply of live animals raised or bred in the country so if you have maybe goats cattle sheep all those things if you are locally raised they're exempt and they're alive they're exempt agricultural inputs like seeds bulbs fertilizers Pesticides, all those things are exempt. Um, supply of crude oil and hydrocarbon products. So all of these distillates, petrol, diesel, kerosene, LPG, natural gas, they are all exempt. A supply of goods for the disabled. A supply of um, postage and postage stamps. A supply of pharmaceuticals. It's a very long list and we've covered every single one in our video. What I recommend is that before you sit any tax exam, this question here, what we are looking at here, it's a very likely um, question. In fact, if I'm not exaggerating, they have repeated this question so many times. I think it comes in cycles. So maybe every once every two years, once every one and a half years, they make sure they ask this question on VAT. Explain any of these and give examples. So my recommendation to you is that for exempt supplies, learn this definition. There are supplies that do, are not subject to VAT. You can even add, i.e., they do not attract VAT. You can add that. They do not attract VAT. Right. Then you also add that they are listed on the first shadow. But please know at least you need to learn five examples. If you are feeling lazy to go and read and learn, let me give you the five. A supply of education services, one. Supply of domestic transportation, two. The third one is what? Just write um, a supply of crude oil and hydrocarbon products. 
including petrol, diesel, LPG, natural gas. But when you write this here, okay. The next is what a supply. In fact, there's let me even write this one a supply of table salts. I just remember this is part a supply of what live animals raised or bred in Ghana. Right? We have what a supply of goods for the disabled it's a long list but you if you are feeling lazy one two three four five six learn these ones as your examples and work with them to any tax exam when they ask you to define exam supplies and give an example please give this and you are good to go right the next one is well they said um we need to define a relief supply so we've done taxable activity we've done exempt supply let's do relief supply now as i explained when we're doing the first um computational question i said relief supplies are taxable supplies just that the person you are supplying them to will not pay you the vat really right so they are taxable but you don't get a payment for it what like i've said the law has changed you are now required such persons are required to what um make payments to you and then later go and apply for a refund. So this is something that when you add, examiner knows you are, you know your stuff, right? So a relief supply is a supply listed on the third schedule of the VAT Act 2013, Act 870. Once again, please don't bother with the Act number if you don't remember. Only thing you need to mention is that it's listed on the third schedule of the VAT Act and you're good to go. Right? Full stop. Such supplies are in fact taxable supplies they are not exempt they are taxable except that the persons to whom they are supplied have special provisions relating to the um, settlement of the VAT amount. Then you can add this for extra points. In practice, this may involve a VAT relief purchase order, which is VRPO, or an upfront payment by the relief person and a later application for a refund of the tax paid you can add as provided in the VAT regulations if you don't remember it's fine but this is what um li legislative instrument 2243 of 2016 but if you don't remember don't bother it's not a big deal it's not going to be the make or break so please for relief supplies remember first thing to remember is that what they are listed on the third schedule of the vat act they are in fact taxable supplies except that the persons to whom they are supplied have special provisions 
relating to the settlement of the VAT amount. In practice, it may either involve a VRP, which I explained to be what a document which they will issue to you. So the GRA gives them a booklet, it's like a, um, a receipt booklet. Then when they you make a supply to them and they are required to pay you, they instead of paying you, they give you that booklet in lieu of or in place of the um, tax amount. Those who don't have VRPOs are now required to make payments. They pay you the tax and they later apply to the GRA for a refund. Right? Examples of relief supplies or persons who are relieved. First one is the president of Ghana. You can never forget this, right? So, oops. Examples include the president of the Republic of Ghana. I said two examples. So the next is what? Emergency relief items approved by Parliament. Then what? Any other supplies to these international agencies? So when you make a supply to any Commonwealth or embassy, foreign embassy, any mission, any consulate, it's relief. If you make any supply to the international agency, so you and ECOWAS, all those people, um, they will be exempt. But the condition is that we should have a reciprocal arrangement with um, the other country. So these are the two main things you need to remember. Never forget the president of Ghana. Then there's also one for um, the, sub, um, the importation of what? Raw materials for certain persons who are members of the Association of Ghana Industries, right? Once again, these have been covered in the video, so I'm not going to go into too much detail here. Let's look at the next one, which is zero. So once again, please, for relief, also note three or even four examples and be safe, right? The next is zero rated supplies. So let's look at this as well. Now, as the name implies, the, the rate of tax is what? Zero percent. So they are taxable, right? So zero, zero rated supplies. Uh, let me tell you where they are listed. They are listed on the second schedule of the VAT Act. These supplies are taxable supplies that attract VAT at the rate of 0%. So they are taxable, just that the, the rate applicable is 0. That's all. They are taxable, but the rate of tax is 0. Right? Okay. Um, examples. You should never forget these ones because zero rated really deals with exports. So when you're exporting goods, exporting services outside Ghana, technically, those are what um, exempt. So, I mean, they are zero rated. Examples include, let me mention another common one, supply of goods to free zones entities. When you make a supply to a free zones company, it's exempt. The next is what? Export or into bracket supply supplies of services for use or consumption outside Ghana. So we've given to then you can say what. A supply of goods um, for use as what well. you can say for use as stores on so either for use or um, shipped as right stores on foreign 
going aircraft or vessels leaving Ghana to a foreign destination so all we are saying here is that if you ship goods that will be used as consumables or stores on an aircraft or a ship leaving Ghana then those goods are zero rated that's all so for zero rated please remember free zones entities number one then any supplies of goods or sorry services that will be used outside Ghana then supply of goods to be used as what or shipped as what stores on foreign going of aircrafts that are leaving Ghana or vessels ships leaving Ghana to a foreign country will be zero rated then you can even add the general when you export goods or exports like items outside Ghana once you have documentary evidence that the goods have indeed left Ghana then they are zero rated remember zero rated will be listed on the second schedule so quick recap exempt supplies are listed on what the first schedule Relief supplies are listed on the third, number three, third schedule. Zero rated are listed on the second schedule, number two. And please know your examples and you are good to go. If you know these, you know that if this question shows up, you do a great job at really answering it. All right, so this will give us um, two, four, six, eight, so eight marks if we are to answer this correctly. It is worth investing the time to get these right because eight marks in a professional exam it's a lot of marks. Final question. This is states a general rule on registration for VAT. So this is for two marks. Now, they want the general rule because there are exceptions. So they don't want you to give them an essay on registration. They just said state the general rule. What is the general criteria to be met um, if you want to register for VAT? Oops. All right. So, the general registration rule for VAT is, let me paraphrase, where a taxable person makes taxable supplies exceeding 200,000 Ghana cities over a 12 month period or where a taxable person makes taxable supplies so divide 200,000 by 4, so exceeding 50,000 CDs over a three-month period, then that person must mandatorily register for VAT within 30 days after meeting the above thresholds. Full stop. If you can write this, you get two marks. The law writes a long winding thing about three plus nine months and all of that. But in summary, the essence is that for you to be registrable for VAT, remember we said for VAT, I've explained this into details in the video on VAT. I don't want to waste anyone's time here. The principle is that for VAT, for you to be registrable, you need to be making what? Taxable supplies. Which is why I said if you are making an exempt supply, an exempt supply is not a taxable supply. So if you're making a taxable supply, and your so first thing is where you're making a taxable supply and your supply your total sales or your total value of the service exceeds two hundred thousand Ghana cities 
over a one year period 12 months then you are registrable you need to go to the commissioner general within 30 days after you realize you've met this criteria to register for vat remember this the next option is well if it's not over a 12 month period then quarterly if i divide by four every three months so over a three month period have you met fifty thousand? if yes please go and register for VAT. so that's it the rule is that for vat once you have met the turnover threshold of 200,000 cities of taxable supplies, take no, no exempt taxable supplies over a 12 month period, then you are registrable for VAT. If not, then if you have met the taxable supply turnover threshold over a three month period, which is 50,000 cities equivalent, you need to register for VAT within 30 days after realizing this. So, this is the um, solution. And you need to know this. What I recommend highly is if you are preparing for an exam and you want to make sure you've covered all areas because VAT is huge. Um, we have things like, where do I keep? Okay. We have things like time of supply rules. We have things like place of supply rules. We have things on refunds or credits. We have things on what even return filing. We have things on registration requirements. Take note that this thing I mentioned here for two marks, this rule over here is just a general rule. In fact, there are exceptions to this rule for people like auctioneers, promoters of public entertainment and what um, public and other government bodies. These people, despite the threshold rules of this 200,000, are also required to register. So, for example, a promoter of public entertainment must register at least 48 hours before the show starts. So, Chatterhouse, for instance, if they are bringing an artist to Ghana and they are not registered already, they have 48 hours before the show starts and they have a 10,000 threshold and all of that. So, there are detailed rules around VAT, which I recommend. Invest the time. Like I've promised, by the time you've watched all the videos, I have put all the things you need to know in one space it's highly recommended so for example registration there are even rules for non-residents who are providing services to ghana like google apple amazon they are required to also do some registration unless they are um, providing services through a vat agent who is registered for vat in ghana so there are so many things like i'm saying that have not been covered by um, these ones um, we will have subsequent videos that will cover a lot of topics so hopefully by doing so many exam questions i'll cover so many topics but please and please again like i've said tax is based on rules it's based on principles so the best way to prepare yourself is to learn the principles and then practice lots of exam questions so from our side we will bring you multiple exam questions across different exam years to cover as many topics as possible but please and please again Try to um, acquaint yourself with the rules, the principles, and the concepts. So let's end here. We have looked at three questions. One from the Chartered Institute of Taxation. Then two from the Institute of Chartered Accountants Ghana at two different levels. So if you love this, it's been lengthy. If you love this, don't forget to smash the like button. It means a lot to us. And don't forget to share this video within your entire network. I will catch you in our next video. Thank you.